Is this working, everybody? I think we might be live. Are we live, Christopher? The social start. I think we are. Wait, we need to double check. It's always a wild ride Yo. with going live. Hello? That's oh, live. that's us. How exciting. Well, hello everybody. Merry Christmas. Oh, I love this. This has now become a tradition. So welcome to the third year of Christmas on Svalbard, Christmas Day. We are drinking, okay, let, let's start off by showing what we've got here. We've got people. No. Exciting. Okay, we have coffee. We have mulled wine, because one is not enough. Do you know what I mean? And then we have also some cheese. We have some saffron buns. We just have a lot of stuff. And I will be decorating this. And Christopher will be laying a puzzle if he wants to. Yeah. Because I think it's quite nice to do something. And also this puzzle is beautiful. But first, I just gotta make sure that everything is up and running. Christopher, tell them what mulled wine we're drinking. Today we're drinking uh, non-alcoholic mulled wine. What? Yeah. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> That's not what I ordered. Is it really? Then it's the wrong one. Yeah, I can make alcohol for you. Yes, yeah, because I don't like the taste of this. Oh, I'm sounding like a brat. Wait a minute. Oh, it's so sweet. I'll keep it for now. We've got time. Right. We've got time. Okay, let's see. Here, now I have everything. So the time right now for us is 6 p.m. And there's a massive snowstorm outside. So if the sound is kind of, I think the sound might be okay this year because I set it up properly. Last year I did it five minutes before and I freaked out because I realized I didn't know how to do it. So I gave myself three hours to set up a live stream today and I needed it. But so let's see, I have you guys here on my little screen so I can see what's happening. A lot is happening. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Somebody says that I should definitely have alcohol mulled wine. But it's not about the alcohol. It's the taste of that mulled wine that is beautiful. That's why I want it. But I have, I have other things. We have plenty of time. So it's 6 p.m. We are on an island close to the North Pole. Oh, yeah. And there is a massive snowstorm outside. It's a massive storm, at least. I don't oh, know yeah. if it's so much snow, but it's uh, yeah, definitely true. definitely windy. Very windy. I think it's 24 meters per second or something, yeah, which so is a lot. Yeah. Oh, it's windy. And okay. cold. It is cold. <clears throat> I'm going to get started on my house straight away because I know that this takes time. Perfection, Christopher, takes time. Uh -oh. And this year, I don't really have any sort of inspiration for what I'm doing. I already made my kind of red and white house. You see, I keep going for the same colors, but I've got white. So I think I'm going to start by doing like, I need one of those crisscrossy roots, those classics, I think. Somebody wonder where Grim is. He's oh. um, sleeping. Go get him. He needs to, <laughs> yeah, go get him. <laughs> It, we tried to take a photo with him here earlier <laughs> in his little Christmas sweater, and he is just not having it. He does not like to be in the kitchen. <laughs> he can't walk on these doors, so it's just a little bit scary for him to even kind of... Oi! Oh! Oh, wait a minute. Oh, this is... Wait, 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 wait. This is a lot different than I thought. I'm going to have to do a different kind of roof. Oh no, 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 my whole plan is over. Oh no. Here he comes. In the way, I move for royalty. Had he hung you in his Christmas sweater? Oh, yeah, no, 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 Oh no. Oh no, no. Oh, oh, oh go away. Oh no. They go block. Tita. They hold on to you. Oh, that is scary. I know, I know. He's wearing his Christmas sweater. Imagine if he could just sit here. <laughs> we could have you here all the time. 
He's wearing his Christmas sweater, which I, from the beginning, I thought it was broken because I didn't understand it. But when then to this year, I looked at him from above and I realized it's a Christmas sweater this way, <laughs> or like a Christmas tree. Sorry. So if we if we <laughs> kebab him around here, you can get the full view of the sweater. <laughs> Here he is, the little baby. And then we can do another little twirl. This is like a dog show. And then another twirl. Here he is in all his glory. Oh, you're so beautiful. This is actually the first time we've placed him on a chair like this. This gives me hope for our coming live streams together. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Do you want to go back to your little room? Oh, I put my hair in my house. Okay. Take the royalty back. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, cool. Are you going that way? Okay, I need to completely rethink my house. This is a catastrophe. A very catastrophe. Um, but also, if you want to ask us any questions, do so in the comments and we'll do our best to, to answer them. I even put on slow chat this time to make sure that, you know, we get to see your comments and everything. Christopher, I have to make a new plan. So okay. it's too thick to make like a... Wait, wait, wait. No, no. Ooh. Huh. Um, um, yeah? Someone wonder where we can get the uh, ebook. Oh, our recipe guide. It's on my website. So all you have to do is go to uh, www.ceciliablondal.com. And then it is on the first page, so you can just click, click on over to the next. And that's our recipe guide that we made. So if you want to do that. So we celebrated Christmas yesterday because yesterday was 24th yeah. of December. And in Sweden and Norway, that's when we celebrate. Yes. So today, what do you usually do today, Christopher? Help a crawl. Just, yeah. Isn't that what most people do go out and drink on in town? In Sweden, no, I think everybody goes out and drink. <laughs> I think in Norway you gather around with friends or family and over party as well. So drinking in both yeah. countries? Probably. I think Sweden has a little bit more of party on the 25th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I had to go back to my original idea. And I actually, I take back everything. I think this is gonna be fine. I have very limited amount of this though. <laughs> so, this could be fine. It might look like a cotton, oh no, 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 no. We had for our Christmas dinner yesterday, charcuterie board. <laughs> and I've never been more happy with doing a charcuterie board. That was nice. It was really nice. Lots, and simple. Yeah, and Christopher also told me about the world famous Norwegian cheese that we have, which is, I really want to, wait, can you buy it out? Yeah, you must be able to buy it everywhere. Probably. It's called Kraftkar. Yeah. And it's, yeah, tell them. I'm not sure which year it was, if it was maybe 2012, but then it got like the best cheese in the world, I think. The name is Kraftkar. It's a really good, uh, Really good and nice, tasty cheese. Yeah, and I don't even like stinky cheeses. It doesn't smell that much though. No. But this one, that kind of taste, but oh my gosh, I am a changed woman because I loved it. So I am a cool cheese girl now who likes other cheeses than Manjigo. I never thought I would see the day. This is not turning out well. I'm wondering though if I might just go and smush it all out and then have like a white background because this is it's terrible. Or, wait, you see, this is why you have two sides of a house. <laughs> Make one, one good. One good one. The first one is a test side, because this is, this is terrible. Christopher, you have made it very warm in here. To the so, point where I think we need to open a window. <laughs> I need to let the snowstorm inside. Um, oh, we, somebody wonder what, what, what the temperature is today? And uh, we have about minus 15 yeah. Celsius. How much is that in Fahrenheit? I want to say like two, but I think that could be incorrect. So I'm going to Google it for us so we all know. Uh, we have finally gotten some cold weather. 
we have been waiting for it, but we also got the wind at the same time. It's five Fahrenheit outside. Five. Uh, that Ams 239, what do reindeer eat in winter with snow on the ground? As long as it's snow on the ground, they eat the grass like... It's called lichen, actually. Yeah. Lichen. And it, it uh, grows on the tundra. Yeah. So it's... This is terrible. I'm going to start it. Don't look at that side. But yeah, lichen. So what they do is they take their hoof, and you'll see them whacking at the bottom. So they whack away the ice, if there's any ice and any snow, to yeah. get to the bottom. So you'll see them just go... So that's why when we had a year where we had a lot of rain, and a lot of um, warm weather, a huge layer of ice was created on the ground and actually a huge amount of reindeer died yeah. because of it. Oh, when it gets too much ice on the ground, then it's difficult for the reindeers to eat. So yeah. it's better that it's actually really cold all the time because then they can get through the snow. But if it gets warm weather and ice, then it's difficult for them to eat. Yeah. So, but this year we don't have that much ice yet at all. It's because it hasn't been mild. It's been very kind of, you know, it's been quite chill. Oh. It hasn't been extreme in either way. It hasn't rained, hasn't been super snowy. Oh my God, <laughs> darling, what is this? My house comes with a detachable chimney. Very good. Oh, are you gonna give me one of those? Uh, some I saw some in this saw some better. asked about uh, snowmobiles. We have taken uh, one of the snowmobiles out, but uh, only the cabin snowmobile we're starting to use now. We haven't been on any trips yet. It's I mean you can drive, but uh, it's it's not very good for your snowmobiles. Uh, also, I'm waiting for my snowmobile. I'm driving for Skidoo this year which is super exciting, which just means that I'm an, um, an ambassador for them. So I actually don't have a snowmobile, so I get to borrow one from them, which is perfect because snowmobiles <laughs> not always survive a season. <laughs> it can be very expensive to literally just like fix it up after a season. Oh my gosh, how did I, I did not know the whole business around snowmobiles and how it's like owning a, I was gonna say motorcycle, but it's not because a motorcycle you take care of very like, a snowmobile is just out there. You can't do anything. Oh. It's out in the elements. It's very, it's very hard snow up here. Yeah. And we always drive with a, a trailer or a sled in the back, and it's always heavy. So I think our snowmobiles up here get battered. Yeah. This was better. This was a lot better. This oh. choice, guys. I saved it. Look at this. We have a blank canvas. Christopher, it's too warm. I'm gonna die in this heat. Okay. It's so warm. We also have a little cheese board here. Do you see it? Yes, we do. With, oh, I feel air coming in. With some crackers because cheese is life. Mm, I wish I could show you what it's like outside, but it's literally holding up a camera to, uh, it's gonna look like a black wall. <laughs> there is nothing to show you, if you know what I mean? The camera can't. Also, I can't move you. I would if I could. Oh, somebody just asked if I've ever been to California. I've been to LA. Um, loved it. My sister lived there and did, went to school. She did graphic design school or editing school. It's really cool education. So I went and visited her and stayed for a month in LA. And I actually really liked LA because I just kind of did the walking around in my workout gear, drinking coffees kind of LA. Like we didn't do, I don't think we did so little partying. We didn't do any of that scene. We just kind of hung out. And she also had many friends. And we had some friends from when we lived in Australia who lived there. So we got to see kind of that side of LA instead where people, you know, family life. I really liked it. Um, and then I spent a lot more time in Miami than I did on the other side. So because my parents had an apartment there for a little while and my sister went, my other sister went to school there. Uh, she did a bachelor. So I was there for three months one time. You see, what I did a lot was I went to people when they were out of place. 
Because I was way too indecisive to be able to say, oh, I'm going to go there on my own. So I just kind of followed, I just kind of like Follow visited through. people. <laughs> I'm like, you're going, I'll come and visit you. And Miami, love, the vibe. I'm going to take you there one day. Yeah. It's actually at the top of our travel list. So we're maybe planning to go there next year. Yeah. If everything aligns, we might be going to Miami. And that makes me so happy. It's just chill. And there's so much to do. So many lovely people. So much good food. But I love LA. Uh, we should go to California. Uh, I think there's a lot. I went to, wait, I also went to San Francisco. But uh, that's not in California, is it? It's on the same side. That wasn't my favorite. It's a lot of crazy people. <laughs> but also very cool. But maybe just not my life. Long answer. Uh, somebody wonder <gasps> Wait, what how have... about well, sorry, how about Canada someday? Top of the list also. No. Continue. Yeah, yeah, I wanna go to Canada. Uh, somebody wonder what we have in a glug in a red wine. And it's chopped almonds and raisins. Yeah. So you have you can buy it or you just get it, but it's a mix and it's very traditional to drink it and eat it. You you drink and then you scoop some in with it and it's incredibly tasty. Dude, I think I'm gonna need some old wine. Yeah, this this is the not alcoholic and it's not that it doesn't have alcohol that's not the thing it's just too sweet it's like a very very thick cordial that's very sweet and very like peppery this taste is amazing but what I like about the alcoholic one is that it's very clean and it's very it doesn't have that super taste okay people help me should I do pink since I have pink you know what it's what we're doing we're doing pink, guys. When can we purchase Grim Cups? I actually have some Grim Mugs on my uh, uh, merch page. The thing is, I do merch for fun, so I put down uh, like the prices to the lowest that I can, uh, which is nice, but I can't offer that many things on it. The thing is, I'm dropping new merch next year because I have made Svalbard designs together with a, uh, a designer. So new merch is coming, but it's more Svalbard, it's more kind of polar bear, like touristy prints, because I think that could be really fun. But Grim is on there. He has like three different uh, designs, I think, for cups. So just head to my merch, it's somewhere. Uh, are you Norwegian? I am Swedish. Christopher's parents are Norwegian, but he grew up in Sweden, so he is both. He holds a Norwegian passport and always has, but he speaks Swedish because he has spoken Swedish ever since he was small. So if you would have stayed uh, in Norway, you would have continued to speak Norwegian. Probably, yeah. That would be the... I assume, you know. Oh, uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. My artistic senses are calling me. This is gonna be a pastel house. Pink for the win. Pink for my yellow. Okay, okay. I'm so happy that so many people are hanging out with us. We actually love doing this. I think also when we started doing our first live, our channel was really small. And we were sitting home in our cabin and I remember we were like, maybe we should just do a live because we weren't doing anything special. No. And we kind of felt like if we're not doing anything, I assume a lot of people also aren't doing anything. And was it the pandemic? Like? No, is that, I, I it's think 2021, so. I think, or was our first one? Maybe. Uh, should we should we should two, should we should three, I one, no. yeah. That's also what it was. It was that it was the pandemic and nobody could see their families. And we were like, this is horrible. You know what I mean? We should just try to do something so we can all hang out. Because Christmas can be so lonely. Remember, yeah? No. Well, remember when you felt bad for me because I had what I call work in Christmas? No. Because I spent Christmas completely alone up here, which I loved. <laughs> I am, I, I love being alone, but that's also because I know my parents and everybody, you know, they were just out somewhere else and I had chosen to not go to anybody. Wait, wait, wait. Mold my joints. I have a tail. Liquid gold people. What was I saying? <laughs> I was saying something. Oh, we got a thing.
thank you so much from Tim Lin. Oh my gosh. Thank you. That's so nice. That's so, so kind. It's gonna go straight to Grimm's uh, tree fund. <laughs> the amount of treats he has a day. Yep, that's going straight to his tree fund. Thank you yeah. so much. But yeah, so we decided to do a Christmas live because we were at home anyway. We're like, this could just be so cozy and I love it. And we did it last year and now we're doing it this year. I forgot the point of this, but I just want to say thank you for being here. And we're also this year, we decided to just do pajamas. <laughs> you know, why not? Because at the end of the day, that's all I want to wear. Uh, so Christopher, have you ever made, made chicken enchiladas before? Oh. I probably have done some similar, not probably original stuff, but... Uh, oh, wasn't aware. Uh, yeah, I like Mexican style food, that's really nice. It's my favorite, you know? Mexican, my favorite. Have you been to Mexico? No. Oh, I have been. Also on our list. We were supposed to go. We had booked our trip and everything. <laughs> and then COVID came. And then the pandemic happened, so... But that's okay, we still have time to go, but I love Mexico. My parents, if you're wondering why I traveled quite a lot, my parents were, I'm so happy that they had this as a focus when we were young and that we had the means to travel because they chose that over gifts. Like for Christmas, we never did gifts and things like that. We went on a trip mm. and we loved it. Like being able to see the world and that they put so much focus on taking us to these places. So, you know, we went to, Mexico one year when I was young and I remember every single trip we've been on and it's even though since I was young it, it really made a huge impression so thank you to my parents for prioritizing kind of that very very lucky I understand that so we have to go Jane what happened with a polar bear near your cabin tell them first the other people who don't know there was a polar bear a couple of days ago here close to the cabin and uh, the police, Sissel Mann, came with a helicopter, a chopper, and uh, chased it away. Uh, no, they didn't found it. Uh, they probably, did, I don't know if they found, found they it. They would have written. Yeah, probably. They, they didn't found it, but it was, we saw some steps, a few Thanks. hundred meter tracks from uh, a few hundred meters away from the cabin, and then it probably went out swim somewhere or went off to another place but you don't forget how it started so it started with we heard the helicopter and i just went aha because there's always a different kind of sound if they're really close and just hovering they're looking for something we checked on facebook and they had written that there were tracks out in Adventalen. so people near town should be careful then a post pops up from one of her cabin neighbors bam tracks photo bear tracks and then she's like it's here somewhere she calls the government. The government comes with their helicopter and they start searching. Yeah. But why they search is because they want to keep the polar bear from going into the village, which they have done this time of year every single time, probably because it's quiet. No, you know, there's it doesn't go into town, but it's every time outside. It's happened. it's happened one time that it actually went into town. Maybe not one time, maybe one time in the last like two years, but it, it, it happened twice in one year. Oh. But anyway, so what they do is they find it, or they try to find it just by looking in with the helicopter, and then they try to push it away, and they do that by just flying after it. But they never found it. Sorry, continue. Uh, no. I just felt like it, we needed to set the scene. But so what we could do out here, we could just watch the helicopter. I have the craziest footage. It's, it's flying like right over our house, so low to try to locate the polar bear. But yeah, so they don't want to do anything to it. They just want to know where it is and keep an eye on it, keep people safe. And keep the bear safe, and which doesn't always work, but you know. Oh, it's so difficult to find this one. You, you don't have to. You can, oi, oi, oi. It doesn't look too bad, does it? I'm dying of heat. Can you think, oh, no, 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 it's too much. Open the door. Christopher and I are very different when it comes to how hot a house can be. Oh my gosh! We have another huge 
a donation tip to Grimm's Treat Fund. Chris, thank you guys. And Sarah, what on earth? Oh, you guys are so nice. Yeah, we should definitely go to Texas. Oh, I think Christopher would love Texas. Can we do line dancing in Texas? That's Nashville, right? I think the food. The yeah, food the food. Grace. The barbecue for you and the line dancing for me. All I want in my life is one line dancing. It's the best thing I know. <laughs> I want the barbecue. And you want barbecue and I want cowboy boots. <laughs> oh, Nathan. Oh, coffee at the Husky Cafe. Absolutely. That is what it's going for. Suzanne, this is it's crazy. Oh, somebody's coming to Longyearbyen. She's going on the 29th. Oh, you're gonna love it. It's gonna be Arctic. Do you know what I love when people come this time of year? You get exactly what Svalbard is. It's dark, oh, it's yes. Arctic, it's it's like the rawest time of year. Yeah. No, it's definitely. it's so yeah. unforgiving. And I think when people visit this time of year, they really get to see a, a part of Svalbard that is very real. Oh. Not that other times aren't, but it's it's like it's not perfect. It's it's it is what it is. But I love this. I think more people should come this time of year because it offers so much of you know the real rugged Arctic. This is not too bad, Christopher. Probably not. No, but this is actually <laughs> quite good. <laughs> now I'm gonna start putting little balls on it. Somebody says, you remind them of a restaurant called The Undertaker. <laughs> and I don't know who that is, but we're just taking it. Oh my gosh, what is going on? Sudipta! Somebody Indian it. food! I tell you guys. Do you like Indian food? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Oh, me too. Me too. But it's often a little bit too spicy for my very, very lame, <laughs> what's it called? Very unexperienced taste buds. <laughs> But I do love like the sauces and the white rice is also one of my biggest loves in life. <laughs> and in, in India, you have a lot of rice. Have you been to India? No. I think you would love it. And I think I would need so much time to prepare for the chaos. But I think <laughs> when you kind of, when you get into that mode, do you know what I mean? Uh, I think you have to get into I, the mode. I was just gonna, you need to start somewhere. I think you need to start by traveling to somewhere where it's semi-chaotic. No, I don't know. Let's like now that we <laughs> haven't traveled anywhere in a really long time except Portugal, I'm like scared of everything. Well, no, I'm not scared, but you know, you kind of forget about travel and like the world. So you need to just get into it. Okay, stop. This is going to be so cute. Wait, I have to make a little bit. Santa candles to stay. This, I, I've done, Christopher's so tired of me now, but every day I wake up, I go, I love this Santa Claus. I bought him at our supermarket. <laughs> and the first thing we did was break his little hat. So it has a break here. And I was like, Christopher. And he put it back on with some glue. This man, this little Christmas Santa Claus makes me so happy. Because it's just so cute. This lovely display here, I bought off of uh, AliExpress. <laughs> it cost like two dollars. It was before I realized how bad AliExpress is for maybe everything, the environment and stuff, for us here, because it sends from so far away. So we're just not doing that anymore, apparently. <laughs> Somebody asked if I, do, if I have ADHD. The thing is, I don't have ADHD. Uh, I have on paper. On paper. <laughs> I think I might have it, but I, I think if I do, it's without a doubt my superpower. But I do think, I've always felt like my brain might work in a, at a little bit of a different speed. But I am not rushing to find out because I don't need any medication. <laughs> You're about to give me the other, are you sure? <laughs> no, but I really don't. I feel like if I do have ADHD, it's a superpower. I, my brain just seems to work fine. What I also find really weird with my brain is that it is always sunny. And uh, it's not until I was grown up that I realized that maybe not everybody has it like that. Do you know what I mean? That I don't, I very rarely have anxiety, like very rarely. I wake up and I'm like, happy. <laughs> and I think it's, I have 
a, probably an over overproduction of like the happy hormone or something. <laughs> but you know what? Works fine for me. Like I cry once every three years. Like it just doesn't come out of me. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm a very not sad person. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But if one, I do have a little anger in me. Don't I? Not that I get angry, but I no. have like my my emotion is frustration. No. And I'll be frustrated for about two seconds, but I might be like, oh, and then I'm done. But I don't have sadness, and I think, I don't know, probably ADHD. I have a great time. Christopher has the opposite, whatever that is. He has slow ADHD. <laughs> oh, I don't have much of that. I can relax. Yeah, but yeah, I can't really. <laughs> I was gonna say I can relax, but I. I can, but I need like a book, and then I'm gone for 24 hours. TV, like video games, 24 hours. Goodbye. Oh, no, I, I can, uh, I can relax, 100. percent Somebody asked if the polar bear are aggressive. Oh. Yeah, some are, some are not. Most of them are aren't really aggressive, but they are. It, if you if they are hungry, they probably yeah. will attack you if they have a chance. So yeah. it's a difficult, uh, difficult, difficult to answer. But they don't you, have you should enemies. always be careful. But I haven't I haven't seen anyone aggressive that really attacking or anything. But yeah. it happens. Yeah. So <clears throat> the best is to be careful. Like a good example is every time we've seen a polar bear, it has been in a way that it's been sleeping on the ice. It's seen us, it looks at us and just goes, what is that? And then it stands up after a while and it walks away. Or it runs away. Mm. But like those two people that were on the East Coast, that's a good example of a hungry bear or like a bear that is not happy. It stalked them down. Yeah, it was hunting. It was hunting the people. So they were out on the sea ice doing some things and I think they were doing some production, but weren't making a, not, like that much noise. Two snowmobiles, two people just going about their day doing this, mm. whatever. And that polar bear sneaked up on them, behind them, and got so fast up on them that it actually, it grabbed onto the helmet. No. It or something, the head, yeah, but I think he wore a helmet. Yeah, yeah. That's why he didn't, like, he survived. The other guy managed to use his weapon. And that is one of the few, or that is one of the situations why we carry guns. That is when you have to use it. So he had, unfortunately, sh to shoot the bear. But a full investigation was made. They called Susuman and they came out. They look at everything. And they could see that that bear had followed them. Was it for a few days or for the entire no, day? That's key. But yeah, they had followed them. And you saw the last couple of hundred meters that it was, the steps got like wider and wider because he was running. So he was like sneaking behind for a while. And then he just run for the last 100, 200 meters and attacked really fast. They are really good hunters. Yeah, but it happens very, not often at all. And I mean, we pay a lot of respects or what's called pay attention to our surroundings. So whenever we're walking out here, you know, we have a look for tracks. And if we would ever see anything, it's, you know, just go home or call somebody or go inside and then kind of look at it. But so far, not too bad. This is so cute. Uh, Rick, he asked about the internet connection up here and the speed on Svalbard. And we have fiber, so we have probably one of the best in the internet on in the world. Do you know how it works? No. It's there. It's optic fiber cables drawn from the mainland, so it's oh, the yeah. ca undersea cable system. So they have in the on the ocean floor drawn cables from mainland Norway to give us fi optic fi fiber optic. Other way around, I think optic fiber cable, uh, high speed internet. But don't forget that we have one of the world's biggest satellite stations here. Yeah. So that is, of course, why we also need quite good advanced technology. So they have customers like NASA. It's really cool. So we have above us on this mountain, Plateau, there are a bunch of satellites. Isn't that cool? No, that's pretty well, No, not a bunch amazing. of satellites. What am I saying? A bunch of domes that uh, connect with the, all of the satellites. Sorry. I got a little bit distracted. You guys are so nice. Thank you so much, Clemens. Oh, happy birthday to Aiden. Do you see it's his first birthday? 
Happy birthday, Aiden. Ja, må han leva. That's the Swedish birthday song. Or, med en enkel du leva on. We have the funniest birthday song where you sing with a single tulip. Uh, on your name day, uh, congratulations, congratulations, and something. Also got right. Uh, Vanessa, hey Christopher, is indoor gardening allowed on Svalbard? Like growing your own herbs and such? Of course. If yes, are there any restrictions? No, as long as it's legal, you can grow anything you want. The thing is, like, most people live in apartments up here and they are quite small, so yeah, you can, you can, <laughs> you can... People do herbs and plants. Yeah, you can do some herbs if you want, like basilica or thyme or whatever it is, but you don't have the space to actually do bigger stuff. Or electricity, and, uh, right? Especially when it's like November, December, January, February, Mars, when it's like dark all the time, so then you need the light so I don't know if it's 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 gonna work but you need the space and what about electricity isn't that expensive no electricity is kind of expensive up here as well now starting to be more and more oh. so but if you have lead it doesn't really it's not that bad but I I don't know we get we the boutique Svalbard boutique takes home like really good herbs. That's our supermarket, by the way. Yeah, supermarket, and we have oh, a really good supermarket. Yeah, and they take home herbs and a lot of vegetables, but the herbs are really good. So they, it's like Thai basilic and basil, basil and all the herbs you need for all the food up here. I think it would be more expensive to actually try to grill it on your own. But one thing that people do love doing that is a whole trend up here is having indoor plants. Um, just because I think it's, you know, it gives you some sense of, again, like normalcy and maybe it also, you know, makes it nice and cozy. The only thing, is, I try to keep five plants alive the last quarter night. I'm never, ever going to own a plant again. Was, I've never been so stressed. <laughs> <laughs> I had to put them in the daylight daycare every day under their freaking light. Whew, that was a lot of work. So oh. yeah, no plants in this house, but people love to do with that. But they need grow lights and things for winter. What is my favorite cheese? I like cheese. <laughs> I like cheese. I like cheese. I don't have a favorite like that, but I like cheese. So it doesn't really matter what you give me. I eat it. Mm. Because it's... So do you have a favorite? No, I like almost anything. Um, I would say Manchiego and now I would say Kraftkar, which I never in, my, in a million years thought I would. Kraftkar is really nice. Somebody asked um, if we can plant things outside. So Svalbard is permafrost, which means that the entire island is covered in permanently frozen ground. Which means that if you dig down into our ground, you, you come to ice. It's really cool actually in the summer when some parts, you know, get pushed out and you can see the difference. It will be so like soil and then a tundra at the top. And then when you get maybe one meter down, not even, it's ice. It's it's ice in this so soil. Soil? Yeah, but the soil yeah. is frozen as well. Exactly, that's what I mean. So, it's, it's all an ice block. Yeah. It's really fascinating. So first of all, it is protected, the tundra, so you can't even put a shovel into it. That's not allowed. No. So you can't grow anything out of because of that. But then also, because nothing does grow here. That's why we don't have any trees or anything like that. We do have mushrooms in the summer and anything that would grow on the top layer. You know, think moss. No. That, so you have flowers, you have shurvel, which is uh, mountain sorrel, that you can actually uh, eat. Mm. If you get, then you have to ask for permission to pick it. No. Uh, mushrooms, you're allowed to pick anything no. because it's fungi and that's fine. Mm. Hi, darling. Bimbi, you don't want to be here. <laughs> He's like, mm -hmm. but yeah, so you can't because it's not allowed and it's not possible. Oi, 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 oi. Oi, that's not, that's a very squiggly line, isn't it? Very decent. A Rottweiler Leo says, hey, you grim. 
Hi, Green. Oh, where do I get all of my, oh, thank you, Gabe. Where do I get all my pajamas? I am a pajamas connoisseur, if that's correct. I love pajamas. And actually, I get most of mine from Victoria's Secret because they have a winter thing that they do every year, which is their flannel, but it's not flannel, it's cotton or something like that. And it has the long arms that I need, because you can see this is a regular pajamas, it's always short on me. And they have long leg version, and they do a bunch of cool prints. And I'm sorry to say, but nothing beats it. And I've had my pajamas from them now for years. I just this year bought new ones as well. So if you're in the US, you can get them. I have to order them to my friend in Sweden who has to send them up here. If I want to buy like I did this year, usually it would just be if I visited my sister, you know. But the, the pajamas, they're, they're very good. If you buy the right ones. Um, so yeah, that's where they are from. The one I'm wearing now is my luxury pajamas, as I like to call it, because Christopher got this for my birthday, and it's so expensive, that's why it's luxury. It's Lexington, but it's also, it's almost too warm and too nice to kind of sleep in every year, so this is my like Christmas suit. <laughs> and Christopher is wearing his beautiful kind of flannel, uh, shirt with his pajama pants. Like we pajamas. always have a trouble finding you pajamas. Because this size is super long legs. Super long legs. <laughs> we usually cut off this much of Christopher's pants. Because he's just a, he's a short uh, king. Short king. Oh. Yes. Oh, this is going to be beautiful. Where did you get your suede brown slippers from? We might go through it all. This is actually Uggs. I actually used to wear a Shepherd of Sweden, but they stopped selling them in a Frost and she's starting selling Uggs. And I love them. They are super comfortable and I always need with a sole because I walk outside in these in snow and everything. I need to be able to go in and out. It needs to be outdoor and indoor in one. Oh. Pajama Grom, somebody says here. You see, <laughs> I love it. short king's rule. Somebody says about W E E D. I don't think I, I don't know what I can say on YouTube without getting you know issues. I illegal substances. As Salbert has a non tolerance, just like Norway and Sweden, we're talking absolutely nothing. And they actually send up police officers once in a while to do a sweep in town. No. So if they have intel that they know that somebody might have I don't know gotten a hold of it somehow, which has happened a couple of times they will do a raid and then they'll just kick people off the island if you're selling if you're selling and then otherwise they will give out you know you might go to do you have to go to jail no i, I think you get a fine if you okay, have yeah. some on your body. so major non-tolerance the only thing allowed in scandinavian countries is alcohol Yo. so yeah that's that's that subject but it's interesting because people ask about it a lot now that it's legal in many places in the world. And I get that. But Scandinavia, I feel it's going to be probably on the last list when it comes to legalizing stuff like that. I just have a feeling. No. Oh. How, much, how much snow do you have right now? The thing is, like, we don't always have that much snow up there. We have snow most of the time, but it's so windy and no trees. And the snow just... And the wind takes it down to the ocean so it doesn't get it doesn't get stuck on the ground so it, most of the times it's like hard packed snow up here but you have places of course there where, where, where this where it's a lot of snow but it's not that like so on the snowmobiles you have these ice scratchers and everything to yeah. to get to not get the snowmobile to go warm the engine to go warm isn't that, I'm sorry, I'm going to speak now. Isn't that kind of fascinating that we drive snowmobiles here, but we need ice scratchers on the bottom because we have so little powder oh. that the snowmobile, when it drives forward, it needs to make powder for the engine to not overheat. Yeah, and for the slides. Yeah, it's very interesting. I was so surprised when I heard that. I was like, wait a minute, what do you mean? How can a snowmobile overheat, you know, when it's like minus 30? But of course you can. Oh, that's so true. Ooh. Mm. Oh, 
Brian, thank you so much. Merry Christmas from Canada. I love that you guys love Poder Night as much as we do. Isn't that like, it's just nice. I was gonna say nice, it's, uh, it's tacksamt. Also, for it's so good, man can do so much cool on that. <laughs> I'm trying to translate one word. I love that you guys love Potter Night as much as I do because when I post about it and make video about it, you know, I know that people are interested in it and it makes it even more fun, kind of, because this time of year. Go in. <laughs> Sorry, Grim is sitting right there. I think I have to let, let him out. Oh, oh. <laughs> I keep forgetting how potent. Mold wine is. It goes into your soul. I think I thought I was taking a sip of my coffee. Uh, if we would ever move somewhere else, where would we move? I think if we were ever like, oh, let's have some, you know, oh, let's be somewhere else. I think I may, might do like a cabin in Norway or like a villa in Norway, maybe. Because I think I would like to live in this kind of climate with the seasons that we have. But then if I was ever able to split my time in two places, I would choose to split my time with Portugal and somewhere in the Nord Nordic countries. So it depends a little like on what, you know, what could we do and things like that. But I love Svalbard. It's such a cool place to live and it's, it's wild and I think when it comes to making plans for the future, I kind of don't, you know? Because I feel like we will... I don't need a set plan. Does that make sense, Christopher? Yeah. Like... Easy, I, easy life to stay up here. Yeah, and also I don't think we need to set a plan when we, we don't know what we want or what we want to do, you know? I think it's better to just kind of, if it's possible, you know, just see what happens. Yeah. I moved here without a plan, you know? We might as well continue the no plan. What do I want? Blue. Okay, we're gonna put little hearts on here as well. We have a little bit of a, an issue here. We'll cover those. Angel. Maybe. Thank you. How crazy is it that we are so many people from so many different countries? Right now we have people from Mumbai, America, Canada, Japan. Who are you from? Sverige? <laughs> I love that somebody said the no plan plan. <laughs> we are on the no plan plan. Yeah. But I think it's also, it's also a luxury to not be able to have to think about a plan. So. Greece is crazy. Oh, somebody from Greece. I love Greece. If you ever want to go somewhere amazing in Europe and you haven't been, go to Greece. Chris, where have you been? No, you haven't. No. We have to go to Greece. There are so many islands. My parents, I can't, still can't believe, when we were young, they took us, three kids, island hopping in Greece. We're talking like fairies, <laughs> backpacking style with three small kids. They must have had the patience of saints. Remember all of those trips as well? I have diaries that I wrote from them <laughs> when I was like maybe six or something of when we were in Greece. It's a very short diary because I, I wrote like four things and then I was like, nope, nope, that's my trip. Oh, from Alida. South Africa, that's far away. That seems beautiful. <clears throat> uh, Angel, Merry Christmas, Cecilia Christophe Ogilie. Are there, many, are there many options for vegans in Longyearbyen? Uh, There's actually a surprising amount of vegan options. Yeah, but still, like, I wouldn't be vegan up here. It's not. Oh, if you lived, no. No, that's kind of boring. I get bored of the food and I eat everything. So to be a vegan and I have all these vegetables that are not, not. Yeah, you have um, a very small selection yeah. of vegetables if you're just vegan no i wouldn't be vegan that's not but if you visit and you're vegan yeah you have a few options i think every every single place restaurant have uh, some option for vegan, vegan or veg vegetarian yeah but uh, you know to live here i don't know people you, are them yeah 
I think you can do anything. We, we have an incredible supermarket, so as long as you're fine with what they have, and they have a lot, you're gonna be fine, you know? Merry Christmas. Romania! I, do you know what I wanna do? I wanna go to Poland and Romania, because I think that they have mountains that are beautiful. They have a mountain range. The wait, is Romania? Yeah, it should. Do they border each other? Oof, my European um, geography isn't always up to par. Jonathan, thank you. Oh, do you get salmon here? Yes. In the summer, you can actually fish for salmon. I found this out this year. I was baffled. Tell them about it. Isn't it that it comes from somewhere upstream? So, but that's, isn't it here? You have two different ones. You have the, the pukkel. The Paco? <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Even called Russian salmon. And then you have the normal salmon. salmon and Arctic char. Is Arctic char salmon or is it just red fish? It's just red fish. It's not salmon. Yeah. But, uh, now, so the Russian salmon is every second year and I think normal salmon is every year and it, there is some people who try to get more or less of it every year and they do it most in the autumn put out nets it's really tasty so that's a good thing that, that it's a good thing that we have so much fish up here we, we don't have that many like different, uh, we don't so much. Oh, we don't have much to source, but we have a lot of fish. Is yeah, that what I mean? It's like we have like haddock and cod mm -hmm. and uh, quite nice. Arctic char and salmon and that. So we don't have like all the fish that you have in Norway or Sweden or whatever. But when we get it, we can get a lot to at least don't have to buy anything in the shop for the next year. So I like that. Uh, somebody asked about my boat skills. You what? My boat skills, where I learned that. Uh, I don't know, I just bought a boat and... Uh, Let's say it was a learning curve. Yeah, it was a learning <laughs> curve. Okay, you had a when small I, boat. When I bought a first boat, they just uh, was a friend who, he was on the land and I painted it and did all the things I had to do before I put it in. And then he just put me in and I never driven a boat before, so... <laughs> Well, yeah, it, it works. You have to, you have to learn the hard way sometimes. But uh, yeah, we learned the hard way with our boat. Everything went fine, but I mean, how do you? It's a new boat. It's a new engine. It's new everything. But I mean, you, I'm so amazed by how you even got through the shit that happened in our boat the first year. Thankfully, it, it was. It wasn't anything that was bad. It was just um, engine stuff, right? That would happen, but you just didn't know the engine. Yeah, always, uh, always small things that happens when you have a boat. Yeah, but doesn't, at least doesn't really matter if it's new or old. Shit happens, and yeah. then you have to take care of it. Uh, but now nothing happens because you already know what can happen. Generally, you've then, already made sure that it doesn't. But in the beginning, you know, it's a huge boat. I don't know anything about a boat. Yeah, most of it, I, I learned. I think a lot of people ask me like, oh, dude, don't you want to drive the boat on your own? And to be honest, I, I actually signed up to do the boat course so I can get my boat license because we need that here. We need a license to be able to drive a boat uh, over a certain size and speed, right? And, but I bailed, I chickened out. I was supposed to do it. I paid, I think it was like a hundred bucks or something. And then I just felt so stressed that I just like, I can't do this. But I think I might do it next year. But I don't want to drive the boat on my own. hundred percent don't. I don't want to be a badass boat lady. I want to be a badass <laughs> boat uh, dr driven <laughs> passenger. <laughs> That's what I want to be. I just want to sit. I don't know. I can't, you know, we don't have to be good at everything. As, like seriously. Sometimes you can just choose not to have that stress in your life. I don't want to be, right now, I don't want to be a boat driver of our boat. It's too, it's too difficult. You have I to know engine stuff. Driving the boat is super easy. Like that's not difficult. Most of the times. Docking it can definitely be difficult, but in bad weather also. But it's everything else that comes with it. I'm never gonna take that boat out on my own. <laughs> you heard it here first. 
It's nice to be too when you go out. Then yeah. you have a little bit of help. But you need to know so much engine stuff for our boat. I uh, can't. I can't know that. Kelly asked, how far is it to the Russian settlements? It's 60 kilometers to the west. Yeah, we have two. Uh, you have Borisburg and then you have Pyramida. And it's about 60 kilometers to Borisburg. Yeah, if you're new here, you might not know that Longyearbyen isn't the only town. Well, it's the only proper town with an airport. But there is also a Russian settlement that's called Barnesburg, where right now only about 300 people live. Um, there is no bad blood between us as we know. I think, I don't know what the officials know, but they are still doing the exchange with uh, uh, the sports and everything. No. Wait, there aren't? No, they, I think they stopped that. Now. Oh, okay, I'll take that back. But anyway, it's not bad blood. I think the, you know, it's... We don't know anything, but we... I don't actually know how many people are there now. I think I heard that there were 300 now. Yeah, there are about two, 300 people. Yeah. Uh, Squeezie, if you find another question. Oh. Okay, so now we have a pink house. I'm actually kind of liking this house at the moment. It would be nice if I could get some of this out, though. Somebody wonder if uh, Cecilia ever going to do a book. Are you going to do that? <sighs> With photos and landscapes and everything? Okay, I'm going to give you the inside scoop. I don't even know if I'm allowed. I may or may not be working on something that sounds just like that. But I may or may not have actually been working on that for over a year. I may or may not <laughs> have about a year left until that is finished. So stay tuned. I will tell you more when I know more. But it sounds like something I would do. <laughs> oh, we forgot to tell them about the ghost town. So you have Barnesburg, and then you also have the ghost town, which used to be a Swedish coal mining town, Pyramiden. Yeah, 100 years ago. So. Yeah, 100 years ago, Sweden started a coal mining town further away from here we've made videos on all of these towns mm. when we could visit them so it's just go on the channel and see those but the ghost town is fascinating they brought in grass from ukraine they had tulips growing there yeah. and now about 10 people town. yeah it's gorgeous they have the best backdrop and the pyramid has what like three people no i think there actually are about 10 people staying there yeah i think they've upped their people limit. yeah i think they are a little bit more these days I think it's I need to a open. beautiful place to live. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It is really gorgeous. We hope to be able to go soon. Do you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to open this and spatula it out. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Try. Yeah. Do we have to? It's very pink house. Something going on. Oh, yeah. Is there jail? Sorry, I was going to answer this earlier. Is there jail on the island? No. There's a holding cell that the government has, but you um, will be sent to the mainland and that happens sometimes but it's usually very like civil procedure like people are pretty it's not very dramatic if something happens they will go and talk to you you know what i mean it's mostly people it's actually most of it is people get drunk oh most of it is people get drunk and yeah, yeah. like i don't know drive snowmobiles not, or hit not, somebody not that much no yeah. we have very little crime oh. thankfully Oh, that's good. Uh, no, somebody wrote in Swedish, Nico. Hey, what is the house of machine we took school? What's the chicken? Uh, <laughs> chicken. What's the kitchen? Uh, appliance. Appliance. Uh, that you see on the camera, and it's oh, the that uh, and it, it's a thermomix. 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 It's a really good machine. I can talk about it for hours. I won't do it, but you should definitely Google it. Thermomix number six, I think it is. It's a super good machine. I use it all the time. Do almost anything with it. And does the, does the best rice in the world. That's all I'm going to say about it. Yeah, Christopher loves that machine. It's oh. super freaking cool. You can do anything in it. You can make soup. You can make... You, you can, can steam things. You can... It's Far ferment, like yeah, you ferment. can do anything in it. So it's, it's definitely expensive, but it does replace like four other machines. Uh, it's oh. so big, 
mixer, steamer. Uh, fermenter, uh, steamer. Fermenter. Yeah, it's cool. It's very, very cool. So many things. Uh, where do we buy our cars? Oh, uh, we have a special, special um, shop, Svalbard Auto, who sell Toyota. So we can buy a new Toyota at that place. But that's Norwegian prices. No, it's what? without tax. Yeah, yeah, so, true. But, but it's based on Norwegian. Yeah, it's new car, so it's a uh, it's new price and everything uh, without it? tax. Yeah. So, but if you want to buy something else ex except Toyota, you have to buy it on mainland. Which is what we did. Yeah, we bought yeah. them in Sweden. So yeah, we bought them in Sweden and took them up here. Yeah. My car is an old company car for a construction company, I think. So it was I'm not gonna say battered, but it was definitely an interesting condition in like in the inside, but. It was really good. It was an amazing price. I bought a Hilux 2016, 14, 15 or something. And yeah, so we, the thing is we have to drive it up to northern Norway where we have to uh, do a, an inspection. And then we have to put it on the boat that goes to Svalbard. And that's a one time, well, it costs, how much is it? 20,000? No, I think it's about eight or nine or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it costs about 800 bucks to get it up to longer bit, but it's a very, very good way to get a car that isn't new or like super expensive. But most people buy secondhand up here, secondhand everything. You want a snowmobile? You go on our Facebook page. You want a car? Go on the Facebook page. You want to buy a gun? Facebook page. It's crazy. No. You need no. all the pro proper papers for everything, but that's where you get everything here on the Facebook page. So most people get their cars secondhand and they're so cheap some of them are expensive if they're good ones but then you have the same kind of cars circulating that cost like five thousand kroners the 500 buck bucks um car no no you know what i mean the whole there's a whole group of the same cars just being passed over to new people Svalbard beef. yeah they call them the Svalbard cars <laughs> And then you can just see the same car just getting a new owner, you know, every two years or something. <laughs> that's kind of funny. Uh, but they, we don't have any inspections up here. And that's why those cars survive till the very end. We don't have to, uh, is he think, correct? We don't have to do one of those um, vehicle checks every year. But you have to do it We actually again. have to do now because one year ago we got uh, the, what do you call it? The... Tulle. No, uh, the, the, the car, they're the ones who take care of the cars. No! Them. So we got the office one year ago up here. How it's do you know? It's not mandatory like uh, on mainland, but it's going to be more and more. So yeah. it's going to be like you have to check it once in a while. Yeah, they might call you in for a random check. Okay, I saw something about that. I just ignored it. That was, well, I mean, that's actually quite good because some of those cars should probably not be on the road. But then again, they're also driving two meters, you know? They're doing very little driving. We don't even have traffic lights here for, for <laughs> gosh sake. Uh, oh, any last minute advice? Oh, somebody's making the saffron biscuit today. Okay, first of all, in the recipe guide, we didn't specify when you add the milk infused saffron mix because we just felt like it could go in any time, which we realized after could have been a little you, bit. You, you, always, you always mix the but you, when you warm up the milk and the saffron, you you have it when you start mix the butter and the sugar, because then you get the yellow color out. out. So that's why I listed it on the first, like uh, take the saffron and milk and uh, like warm it up so it gets really yellow, and then take it in the in the butter and sugar and stuff. Yeah. Any other um, tips for that? It will work to do it later, but uh, it's more difficult to get like the super yellow color that you want. Yeah. So, so wait, maybe the tip is take your time to mix and infuse the milk so you get the yellow color. Yeah. Like really make it infused because then you get that really like strong yellow saffron mm. biscotti. We've seen a couple, we've seen many people do the recipe, which is so much fun. And there have been various amounts of yellow. And I think it comes down to maybe what kind of saffron you're using. If it's powdered, I don't think you get the same yellow. And then if you really like infuse it in there. Yeah. Oh no, it's my favorite recipe. Do we have some here? Yeah, we are talking about, sorry, for anybody who wonders, this. 
biscotti. Well, it's, it's probably not going to focus, but this is the biscotti. So it's definitely one of my favorite treats. And it's actually very easy to make. Yeah, like, I thought difficult. it was com complicated, but it's not. No, they are quite easy to make. Oh, that's probably... <laughs> Yeah, I also like that Christopher's reading the comments. I think it's really nice because it's, we're trying, like, it's really, everything with YouTube is you live and you learn. The live streaming was so much harder than I thought. <laughs> but now that I have a proper mic, so I hope that the sound is good because the other years the sound has not been good. And that ruins me. And we have a proper camera, we have, like, I think we did a good setup this year. <laughs> yeah, it's because I took three hours <laughs> to set it up. <laughs> three darn hours. So worth it though. I'm so happy. I'm a little grim. Uh, Where did you train as a chef, Christopher? I trained as a chef in a school in Westeros. Uh, oh, I. School, I don't know about school, you know, when you go practical, when you're doing a practical work. You, of course you learn some things, but you learn when you get out to the restaurants. That's where you learn all the stuff. But it's good to know some uh, basic stuff from school, of course. But working your way up, that's probably what you have to do when you work as a chef. You work many hours and long hours and work with everything. Somebody asks us what we do for a living. And we can happily tell you that right now, uh, content creation is our main job. And we are so excited to be able to actually do that full time. In the beginning, like the first years on YouTube, or the first year I would say, because this has gone very quickly, we both had jobs. Mm -hmm. I had three jobs at one time, at the same time. School, Frost, uh, of the sea on the side, yeah. yeah. I was doing quite a lot at the same time. Christopher was doing his job as well. And then when this started taking off, like YouTube and everything, I quit my jobs because I was noticing that if I put more time into this, I think I could make it bigger. Or like not bigger, but I could actually make it something that I could work with forever. Not forever. I could start working with it. <laughs> so I quit my job. And then we realized that if we're going to do this, videos and productions and stuff like that like our own he needs to also be available because i can't do it on my own because if we're going to do it we're going to go out snowmobiling we're going to go to different cabins we're going to do everything together but if you have your schedule to do it was so difficult so well, we took a risk we took a risk to and we decided to both quit our jobs and hope for the best the thing is up here you can very easily get a job again uh, and I think we would have been rehired by the same company. I think I even asked, like, if this doesn't work out, she's like, you are welcome back. <laughs> like, you just try that out. So, which was also very nice. Uh, but sometimes you just kind of have to, you know, you have to just go for it. But again, we had a cushion. You, sometimes it's easier to go for it when you have a cushion. And now, long story short, we are working with YouTube and uh, making videos and cookbooks now which is so exciting recipe guides so this what you're seeing is our job but today we're just here to hang out have yeah. fun because christmas can be lonely so we might as well spend it together outside in oregon did you get a christmas card from oregon i know we got one christmas card from oregon i read it we open every single card and we save them uh, so we don't have, if there's an email address that's written with it, we always reply and say thank you uh, because I just love getting Christmas cards. But if there's no way to say thank you, we say thank you here. We got yeah. so many Christmas cards. Also, whoever owns the, ch the child Charlie, eight years old, <laughs> if that's your kid on here, let us know because Char Charlie, eight years old, sent us a Christmas card asking if I like to eat snow if i like eating pancakes and i have never smiled more i think so i thought that was the cutest thing i've ever heard do you have your own snowmobiles i think almost everybody who live up here have a snowmobile uh, i sold mine yeah but we still have three we i would not say we you okay we have i have two snowmobiles and then, the cabin and then we well. have a cabin snowmobile and then we're getting two more. Yeah, but that sounds excessive. So what? Let's let me break this down. We Christopher has one that he's gonna sell. Yeah. 
Uh, then he has his backup one, which was his first one, which is a kind of would you like a workhorse. It's a working machine. Yeah, it's a working machine for <laughs> other things. Then we bought Lynn's old snowmobile for maybe two thousand dollars. No, fifteen hundred. Ten. Ten. Okay, yeah. So we bought Lynn's old old snowmobile for about a thousand bucks because when we're here at the cabin, the ones that we have you can't really start and stop all the time without it kind of not causing damage, but it's not good for the snowmobiles. So that is our cabin snowmobile. And anytime we need to go up and down, we need to bring stuff down. We use that one. The other, his workhorse is just parked, because you don't want to sell it, and that's why. Uh, it's like a, it's the, it's the snowmobile who sold most in the world. It's like yeah. a Yamaha Viking Fem Forty. Yeah. And it's super good to have out here, because like when you make ski tracks exactly. and everything, yeah. it's so good to have that one because it's air cooled and it doesn't get warm. Yeah. So it's it's a, I don't use it so much, but when you I don't use it, sell it, when I use it, it's the best to have. And then we are best. getting two snowmobiles on loan. I don't have one, so it's uh, because we're driving for ski do next year. So they are sending me uh, two snowmobiles so we can make content with it and be out and about and very very kind. So that's just borrowed. I get to borrow it from January till May, and then I think they sell it up here, correct? As a woman able to get it off. Could be. Yeah, so I think they sell it after that, but I get to borrow it for a year. Hopefully, I will work with them after that again. I love Ski Do. I mean, it's one of the best snowmobile companies. So, right now, Christopher has two. I have zero. The cabin is one. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds excessive, but up here, snowmobile is our only way of getting around in winter, and our winter is from, you know, now till April. No, mm. June. So, it's. It's like the main kind of, let's see, it's the main mode of transportation. Okay, let's see. Where do you keep your snowmobiles? Just outside? No, they are outside. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see what Emily is asking. Okay, Who no, you? maybe not. Who do you train at the bottom? Oh, Frida. Emily needs to chill. Emily has gone to chill for a little bit. It's, I'm trying to moderate while I'm here. Poor Emily, I, I had to hide her. I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, oh, Philippines, I saw somebody who asked if there are only people here who live, who live here uh, who come from cold countries. And we have people from 40, well, with 40 or 50 different nationalities. And we have a lot of people from the Philippines. That's how I thought of it. Mm. So, um, there's actually three girls that I follow that have an account. I don't know how much they're posting now, but they're called Arctic Filipinas. And it's Angie Kaina and another girl. Uh, if you're from Philippines or you're interested in different people living up here, go check them out. They're very, very cute. I just now borrowed my Courts of Thorns and Roses books to Angie. So, she is uh, getting into that series. So, that's what's so cute about this community. Like, we. We're all just kind of hanging out. So there are people from all over the world. Mm. Mm. Dawn. Interesting. How long? Thank you, Dawn. How long would it take y'all to ski to Long Haven if you were to ski? Oh, uh, I'm thinking from, I think you mean from our cabin. I walk to Long Haven sometimes with Grim. It's exactly eight kilometers, which is five miles, I think. And it takes one and a half hours if I walk. Oh, oh. Uh, about one and a half hours to walk. So it really is just one road. Pretty fair enough. And skiing, I would say the same. Skiing is 90% of the time just walking with planks on your foot. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I should go to the knitting group on Thursdays. I actually want to start knitting. But Christopher says, do you really need more things to do? <laughs> and he has a very good point. I will get like, the thing is, I want to be able to make my own sweaters, but I know that I have to get really good. And one other thing is I'm noticing that my hands are taking a lot of damage from all the editing and using my phone. So I think if I add another thing where I have to use my hands i might just ruin these hands forever so 
but I do kind of want to start. I think I'm going to add that on my list in my life. Be able to knit a sweater. Um, that would be exciting. You know what I mean? This is a very pink house. Do you see all of the details? <laughs> I don't think you do. But it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Um, Mr. Comment Person, come back. Yeah. Come back and make it all. Is this pink? Have to make, make it a little bit more fire. Yeah. So. Knitting will help relax you. The thing is, I knitted a hat for Christopher. And I knitted like it was my only job in the world. I, I just get very into things. So I don't know if I can chill knit. <laughs> I but know. I think though, why knitting would be amazing is if I was to watch TV or something, I need something to do with my hands. So I think, like my Rubik's Cube face, yeah. I was so relaxed. But I think I want to get into it. It's just that I need to be ready to learn a new. Yeah. We, can't, we can't help you. We can pull up a chair. Can we get us to and do that? Yeah, Kim, we are going like this. Not working. Going like this. Maybe a red chimney? No, green chimney. Just that? No, that doesn't match. Maybe a red. Red chimney. Merry Christmas from sunny Los Angeles. And Sweet. from Johannesburg. And from Johannesburg and from Chicago. Somebody asked, do we have and eggnog? Pakistan? Oh, the... Eggnog. I checked a recipe for eggnog. When you do eggnog in Norway, you just use sugar and uh, the jello of the egg, I think. Yolk? No, no, yeah, the egg yolk. And maybe some white. I'm not sure if it's like four eggs and two whites or something like that. But I saw, saw a recipe in the Thermomix now, the machine I have. They, it had Wi-Fi, so you can Google for recipes, and it was another style who was actually some milk and cream in it. And I th think I will try to do that one, because I really like eggnog with uh, some cognac in it. That's so nice. The thing is, I'm not an eggnog person. I'm not a very sweet person, I realized. You know what I mean? I don't like very sweet, like I don't like hot chocolate. I like coffee. I like, you know, if somebody would say, do you want a cake or a sandwich? Sandwich, every single time. So I don't think I'm an eggnog, eggnog, egg, eggnog? No. Yeah, yeah, eggnog yeah. kind of gal. Eggedoses. And also thank you so much to everybody who's read the New York Times article. This was, I think that's like one of my highlights when it comes to media. I was wild. Uh, last year, Rolling Stone did a magazine, no, did an article, I mean, that was massive, I felt. That was just such a crazy moment. And I feel like New York Times is the same. It was wild. So thank you to Remy, who works there, who wrote it. It was, you know, a, a lifestyle piece. Very exciting to see people kind of, you know, talk about Svalbard and also the regular life on Svalbard, that it's interesting. I think that's really nice. Not just mm -hmm. science, education, climate change. It's also kind of like living in a different place. Living the life. Living the life. Oh my gosh, what? Eggnog with club soda? Hmm. Okay. Um, put that on your list. Vadim Birwev, thank you so much. Here we have Caroline from Nook, Greenland. Mm. Not bad. Greenland, also at the top of the list. The thing is, I think when you when I go there, I might just fall in love. Oh, I you think know? Greenland is a nice place. It, the moment when I found out that Greenland also that they speak Danish because it's Dan like Denmark, yeah, Danish, and also their own. So you know when you just don't know about something for a while, but this was years ago I realized about how Greenland is governed and everything, but seems to be beautiful. I need to go visit. Or should I put uh, uh, I think it must be a cool place. So big. So big island. Eggnog in your coffee? <gasps> uh, not oh, so oh, somebody asked, are you happy with your new coffee machine? Lelix Bianca is a beast of a machine. But also, it just works. But we're waiting. Oh, we need to follow up on our, our grinder. 
we bought a new grinder. Okay, so the coffee machine business, it's very specific. It's kind of like if you buy a nice coffee machine, the grinder is the most important part. And somehow I just kind of forgot my focus. I didn't buy a grinder with the coffee machine because I couldn't find one that I wanted. And I needed to do more research. So we bought the Lilith Bianca and then we bought the Wilfa uniform. And when, every time we spoke to somebody, they said, yes, it's a great, it's a great grinder, blah, blah. And then when we bought it, we did some research. Everybody said it was great. And then I did some more research and everyone's like, yeah, but it's not great for espresso. And I was like, and then we got it home and I realized why, because it has three settings to use for espresso to get a nice grind. And it's just not enough. So that costs 400 bucks. So we will be selling that when we get our new grinder. No. And the new grinder we're waiting for. So we'll update you when we know, but the coffee machine is gorgeous. It's, I have, if you've been on this channel, I've been saying since year one on YouTube that I'm gonna get a nice coffee machine. I just need to kind of wait because it's so expensive. And now I waited until now and now we bought one. So I'm very happy. It's, uh, I love coffee, you know? So it was, it was in due time. We don't see the details on your heart, are you kidding me? Let me show you. With my piece. Can you see? I've been working so hard. No? <laughs> that didn't really show anything, did it? Okay, I'll add some more noticeable details. Oh! What is your favorite meal? Do you know what your favorite meal is? No. Barnacles. Yeah, oh, that's good. Barnacles. There is something in Portugal, I don't know what it's called anywhere else, but it's barnacles. And it looks like little fingers in small little jackets. It's the strangest thing. Christopher, of course, devoured this. You um, loved it. Oh, it was super good. It's seafood. Fiz me dog. I gotta get help. No. It's meat. <laughs> a beautiful masterpiece. Thank you, Nancy. It's just what I needed to hear. I'm going to add some more noticeable pieces now, okay? Because I felt like now that I look at it on, I see that you see no color. Okay. We are going, we're going to do double trouble here. We're going to do curtains. You're gonna see color now like you've never seen color before. Can you imagine that we've been in darkness now for how long? One and a half months? Yeah, December, okay. yeah, no, a little bit more than one month. Meet no December, no meet no November. Oh. Yeah, a bit more than one month we've been in complete darkness here. So it looks like this all the time. Like this is windows. We should be seeing a fjord on the other side. Oh, we don't. Oh, oh, oh my god, oh my gosh. Favorite Nespresso pod, I can't remember. Um, the machine in the corner with Christopher is called a Thermomix. Write it down, everybody. T-R-T-H-E-R-M-O mix. It's everything it's also very expensive but again it's you know it's investments he's a chef it's a good machine it's an incredible machine it's really been flawless since we bought it yeah guys you made me ruin my house look what did i <laughs> what did i do you said it wasn't enough color to make a red uh, uh... actually i kind of like it I'm going. I'm committing to this. Maybe it should be like this. Does darkness make Christmas feel more magical? Yes. Oh, One, I would five, say five, maybe seven. the opposite. What? Like if you are up in the north okay. of Norway or Sweden and you still have some a little bit daylight and trees and so much snow, that's magic. But it's if it's a nice day here and no wind and a little bit snow and all the lights, of course it's amazing. But it's uh, it could be nice with some daylight for Christmas Day. So 
No. I think it adds to the many days feel like fairy tales. Like it feels like incredible fairy tales up here. But I think what what Christmas feels like up here is hibernation. And I think oh. that's why it's so cozy and so magical. We are in a little sleep zone, like sleep setting. Oh, aren't we? That's that's so true. So it depends on what kind of magic you feel, but I I really do feel like there's a certain magic in this, but it's not the Nordic magic. It's kind of the rugged Arctic darkness. No. It does feel crazy. And somebody, Annika, favorite season, the polar night or the midnight sun. Oh. And I wouldn't like to live here without any other. I, 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 I like everything about it. So I like the darkness and I like the, the sun. For me, polar night. Midnight sun, absolutely. It's but if you had to choose, like, sunlight forever or darkness, the sunlight is brutal. Yeah, but you can't live in darkness. No. <laughs> so, okay. like, if you have to choose, you have to live in midnight sun. But I, yeah, okay, you true. probably would go crazy if you never get, like, you would probably adapt and get a really dark room. Yeah, I prefer, that. I'm eating olives, by the way. Um, I prefer the darkness. I prefer how it feels what we do at, like if you take away all the activities and everything just the darkness i find more comforting yeah. while the light is very very stressful that's what it is it stresses me out but the light is so it's, it, the light is so nice to have when you're going out with a boat and everything so that's what i like about like summer you adapt for what it is and boat and summer here are you can go in the night time and it's it's light. So it's never easy to drive a boat. So that's kind of nice. I'm just, I am enjoying my buffet of things here. Are you not gonna eat anything? I'm gonna eat later. Well, I'll eat now. This is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, Grim is still in the living room. In, in his Christmas sweater. In the TV room, sleeping. Mm. What a nice Christmas! Oh, what is your favorite recipe using cardamom? Cardamom, we spoke about this the other day. It is my favorite spice. I love cardamom so much. It's just, well, not my favorite spice, but it's one of my favorite, especially this time of year. It has so much flavor. What's your favorite recipe? I don't have a favorite with cardamom, but it's very common to put it on, like, in cardamom buns, right? Oh. Yeah, when you make a dough, it's always nice to have cardamom in the dough because it gives such a good flavor on it, in it. Do you have a favorite cardamom recipe? No, I like, like, you know, classic cinnamon buns. They're about with cardamom in the dough and cinnamon in the filling. That's probably like... That sounds really nice. Yeah, that, that's... Isn't that like, very classic? Yeah, super classic. Oh, that's probably why I like it, because like... Do you know what I want you to make? No. Biscotti with cardamom. Cardamom biscotti. Oh. I noticed that biscotti is something that we should always have at home because it is so nice to have a little piece of this biscotti with your coffee every day. And it's also like the perfect size. Like these are a meal. Love them, but they are, <laughs> I took a bite. <laughs> I just tasted it. Um, but they're a meal. But this little piece, you can have it with your coffee. You know, I don't who, like too much sweet. Betsy wonder who makes oh. your hand knit sweaters? I have, you knit. I have bought most of mine from uh, the Facebook page. Yeah, and I get all of mine from my family. Yeah, he has the most amazing knitting family. Yeah, all of all of all of them knitting. Very so amazing. we got uh, we always get some knitting for Christmas. So yesterday we opened uh, some socks from. Uh, my father's wife, Linda, she knitted some socks for us this year. 
I'm just a freeloader. So, and they are super nice. So oh, speaking of, take off my uh, sweat. Can hold up the beer also. This is his mom made these. Look at how beautiful. And I need to ask for more. Thank you. Mm. I need to ask for more. Ask. I need to like buy more from her or something. I need to bribe her to get more. That's what I mean. But she makes also amazing things. His mom, Iadel. So I'm just here to freeload and get from your family because my family doesn't knit. <laughs> we all have things, you know what I mean? We gotta... Oh, charging buffalo. Merry Christmas. Merry Krimbo. Oh, this is so funny actually. Can we buy a ring like the one Cecilia wears? I wear a gold band with polar bears and you can buy this because I made it with our local jeweler. Marina. I don't think she makes them in gold on her website because she does all of hers in silver. So that's, you can, you can't ask for one to be made, but she has these on her Etsy shop. I think you search for polar bear shop or you go to her web, her face, no, her Instagram, which is like Marina Goldsmith or something. I'll see if I can link it in the description later, but she makes the most beautiful uh, jewelry. We've made a whole episode with her, and this, I think I'm gonna go back. I got so excited with this question. I'm gonna go back and make with her a polar bear bracelet. So she sends, she ships worldwide. And if you come here to visit, you can buy her jewelry at Frost, uh, at the supermarket, at the airport, and in her own shop. So I love her polar bear jewelry. And also it's made here. She sits and she hands made everything. Love Marina. She's also a crazy woman in the best way possible. She's so much fun. She's lived here for what, 40 years? That's been there a very long time. Yeah. Probably 30. Oy, oy, oy. There is one church here and we don't go to church because we are not religious, which is very common in Sweden to not be. Um, correct? No. Yeah, we're not a very religious country at all. Norway is a little bit more religious, isn't it? No. No? And it's all Christianity, which is the main religion, but I would say that nobody, and nobody I know is religious. So it's not something, nobody when I grew up at all either. I don't know a single person who was religious no. in my no. school. I'm trying to find one person because it's something you would be like, oh, but we don't. So no, we don't celebrate in church. The church up here though is beautiful. And what I like with our church, do you know what they do? No. They invite different religions to hold sermon at the church. Okay. So they had a Catholic priest hold a, whatever it's called, one of those. They have an Orthodox uh, priest, I'm sorry, I'm ha Catholic Orthodox. I don't really know the lingo, but I was there to film for this. So what they do is, since we have so many different religions up here, they also invite other people and other religions to come up to the church and have different sort of sermons and happenings. And I think, I love that. It's open and it caters to everybody. Yeah. But our church is so cool. We have a woman priest. She's called Sylv. She's a badass. She is. She's really cool. So uh, she was in New York Times, a photo, also. Okay. Uh, it was, she was in New Orleans soon, doing a sermon out in the crazy snowstorm or something. Anyway, she's cool. She's very cool. And our church is very lovely. They hold the different game evenings. They host a lot of people. I think they are a very comforting presence for the people who need it. So hmm. I think that's nice. Again, not religious, but I do love when something helps people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then we have oh, strange me meat web. Mitvad. Uh, föredrar ni Jonsons frästelse eller potatsgratäng? This makes this a whole, you have to use uh, Do you prefer Jonsons frästelse or potato gratin? Uh, it's like Jonsson you eat maybe one twice a year and potato gratin you can eat once. <laughs> every day. You can day. eat every day if you want, <laughs> but yeah, you, it's like Friday, Saturday probably. Uh, I like Jonsson. I think I'm gonna do Jonsson tomorrow. Uh, I don't eat I don't eat like Christmas food very often, but 
I think I'm gonna do Yonson. I try to do Yonson one time a year, and that's around Christmas. So yeah. tomorrow it's gonna to be probably Yonson and some meatballs. And if you're wondering what Yonson is, it is uh, shaved potatoes placed in a tin thing with an anchovies. It's finger potatoes, like uh, inte shaved. Utan. Nej, men alltså de är shavade. I flak. Nej, så. Oh, it is. So they're not shaved like that. They're made into sticks, potato sticks, uh, and then they are put in the oven with the stuff and the anchovies. What's that? It's a very Swedish or Norwegian thing. I it's very it Swedish. Works. Swedish, okay. Do we make lefts? Somebody says, show some outside happenings. We can't. It looks like this. If I open the window or open the door, also I can't move you guys. It's so windy stuck. outside, it's like a, like a storm outside, yeah. so it's not... And also a regular camera doesn't show it, you know? Because I need to go into special settings. I think I'm ruining my house. I... Oh, wait, what was your favorite book of the year? Okay, let me go in and check. So I am on Goodreads. I don't know if I'm going to share my Goodreads app because I don't know if I... I can do that. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Man, good reads. You didn't read that much this year. Uh, it was one of those years where you didn't. He gets in and out of his reading. Okay. Want, no, no, no. I read 13, no, I read more, but I didn't, okay, I've read, hmm. this. Okay, one that I really liked was Tales from the Cafe Before the Coffee Gets Cold. And it sounds like it's a coffee book. It's by, I think, a Japanese writer. Incredible. It was just, I started with the wrong book. I started with book two. Doesn't matter, I think. But I loved that story. So I have some more of that ones to read. Then I also read, I read The Silent Patient, which made me a little bit mad at the end because I think it could have been longer, but I have never been so engulfed in a book. Um, and then definitely just from a class. I am missing a lot of the books that I read here. I didn't, I haven't, I haven't registered them right. But it wasn't the best book year for me. I've read quite a lot, but not like amazing. Not like when I realized or that I, when I found A Court of Thorns and Roses. So, but when we travel next time, I'm gonna buy a lot of new books because I have a list that is like this long of things that I want. But I read Fourth Wing, which I thought was okay. It's a teenage book, I think. So I think I'm, I need to get some of the ones on my list. Oh. Lisa, mm. Lisa <laughs> something, I, I don't know. Just say the first <laughs> name. Uh, do you ever eat old fashioned food like Lutfisk and Lefse? Uh, yeah, Lutfisk is some, <laughs> yeah, Lutfisk white is, fish. yeah, it's Slimy like, white fish. <laughs> yeah, you can say it smells a little bit like egg, you put caustic soda, uh, no, yeah. it's like baking uh, soda maybe, no, uh, you put, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know the English word for it where you put it in, but it's an old, uh, it's an old fashioned way to do some, uh, you use mostly cod or say, I think, uh, and you eat that for Christmas table. I ate it with my neighbor this year. We were there like uh, and had one night with Lutvisk and some nice drinks to it. And Lefse, uh, that you eat all year in a way. Yeah, it's super good to do left set. I wish I had like a, you need like a special pan, a takke. I think we're for, getting one though, because it. you've been wanting one for a while. Yeah. But I have some questions here. Are you ready? Yeah. But sorry. No, I'm ready. Just sorry about. Oh. oh, sorry. It's going so fast here. I'm trying. To <laughs> but we don't. Well, to finish that off, we don't eat that much traditional food. Left, uh, I fisk. do. You're not at home. No, not at home because you don't eat it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I eat it. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But then you can go out to the evenings that they have oh. in town because it's uh, big. You, you feel free to make it at home. <laughs> I'll eat what I like. Uh, what I'll eat. Okay. So I have some questions here. Somebody asked, "What is my favorite book?" And that is Stoner by John Williams. I have I haven't found a book that felt so 
that made me feel so much like that one in a really long time. You still have read it? No. Oh my gosh. I think I started with it, but... You were just, yeah. But then somebody asked, what is your favorite TV show you've been watching on the big screen? I introduced Christopher to The Good Wife. And The Good Wife, my bestie, introduced me to a few years ago, and I was consumed by this show. So I said to Christopher, wait a minute, there's a show you can watch, because he's very good at, like, watching a lot. Do you know what I mean? You get into one, and then he commits. Oh, yeah. You watch it. Like, he'll, he'll take a little nap in between, and then <laughs> open his eyes, like, what happened? I I'm think like, I'm oh. already on season four, and this uh, has gone, like, five days. <laughs> yeah, it's five days, season four. The Good Wife, it's so good. Oh, that's and awesome. I love that we, we have very similar taste in the TV shows. I've got certain. I don't, when it comes to what I would recommend to you, I don't yeah. recommend to you my white trash TV. Uh, I love reality shows, but I wouldn't say that's good. I just watch it because it's, it's you know, Bruce. Mm. But stop! Mm. Mm. The Good Wife mm. is incredible, and that means that you have the good fight after. It just has a couple of seasons. But so that's what we've been watching. Well, he's been watching and I've been playing Zelda. Thank you very much. Tears of the mm. Kingdom. That's me. <laughs> Somebody asks if we own or rent our cabin. We own this cabin and we rent the land that it's on. Because the government owns all land. Yeah. Correctamente. Oh. No, but really. we are on a lease that's 50 years. I think the first lease was 100 years and then they changed it. Not sure, but it is something. Yeah, else. so it's like, it's it's not that they can be like, oh, we're going to take that back now. It's just that it's because we can't own it. Oh, you know what I mean? It's a little bit dirty. Huh? Um, the Norwegian TV show, Julie Kalender, that had the magic, like, uh, tree decoration. Wait. It's Snöfall. It's ready? for, like, the children. I'm sorry, but <laughs> what? That they, like, the what is all I can say. That they made this. It's the most magical thing we own. Not probably. And you know, okay, so if you haven't watched the Christmas calendar, every year we have an advent calendar series in both Norway and Sweden. It's a short, like, 15 minute episode every morning up until Christmas from the 1st of December. This year they are on season two of Snowfall. And what they say is that Santa Claus lives in a village called Snowfall and he blows one of these for each wish for every kid. So he reads a letter and then he blows and then the wish comes true and then he puts that down. So this is one wish for a child and it's the most heartwarming story. Yeah. There was a lot of drama this year, but the best kind of drama where it wasn't like ruined Christmas crazy. It was just so much fun. Yeah. It's the best Christmas calendar that I've ever watched, to be honest. We have some incredible Swedish ones, but Snowfall quickly became one of the best I've ever seen because of the characters. And you can watch it on nrk.no, but I don't think they have subtitles. But it's open to the world. Wait, somebody said they have subtitles. No, not sure. They might. So, yeah, it's so incredible. You can buy the bauble, the this, on a website called N O R L I dot N O. I don't know if they send abroad, but that's where we got it. Oh, oh somebody asked if I played, did you play Hogwarts Legacy? I have not because I don't own a PlayStation 5. I only have Nintendo Switch. I was gonna buy a PlayStation 5, but I'm so preoccupied with Zelda and uh, <laughs> Stardew Valley that I can't commit to anything else right now. I have been on Stardew Valley for four years and it's been the best four years of my life. <laughs> so I am busy and now I'm doing Zelda, which is also proving to be the best time in my entire life. I played until 6 a.m. two days ago. <laughs> Yesterday I played until 2 a.m. So I'm busy, but I will play. I love stuff like that. Maybe this is it for today. What do you think? Hmm. My house is done. I should have chosen a, a color that actually shows up for you. <laughs> but now I added some red to it, which actually makes it pretty nice. Uh, oh, I'm gonna show you my other house just because we're gonna take them down now anyway. So we do every 
year we do an, a proper competition. Okay, there is a box either. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at the back. Close your eyes. <laughs> Nothing to see. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Nobody saw the back, right? Oh my gosh, I showed the back. Oh, I'm sorry. But I won this year's gingerbread competition, which we host with our friends. Everybody gets a house. I may have made mine a mansion. <laughs> But boo-hoo, I had more time. <laughs> but so everybody can get mansions next year. I'm gonna make it even bigger. We're going big, honey. I won. I don't win anything but pride. No, pride? What do we win? The honor, sorry. Yeah. And I like the honor. So I was very, very happy with that. I made all of this out of puff pie spray. Oh, wow. So <clears throat> look at that house and don't look at the one I made today. But maybe we should say, <coughs> Sorry, Merry Christmas. Um, Merry Crimbo, Merry Christmaso, Feliz Navidad, the Good Yule, Good Yule, not Good Yule. Um, oh, we should bring Grim up for to say Merry Christmas, maybe. Huh, I don't think he wants to come. He wants to come. <laughs> Go get the dog. Go get our son, Christopher. Oh, somebody said they're going to make Knek. Thank you so much for being here on this live. I think this is something we're going to continue for as long as we're home and we are in the cabin because then it's super easy and it's so much fun. We all get to hang out. <laughs> he went to go get Grim and he, he just collapsed on the floor like, you can't touch me. Come here. Come here. No, have a day. You're come. You have to come up. It's an order. You have to be very firm with him and tell him that he shall, he shall oh. indeed. Oh, here he is. Your Highness, <laughs> your Highness, your chair has arrived. Here he is. Cool. We'll just put it close to here. And we'll give you this one as well. Oh my gosh. Is this your kitchen? We made a little bridge for you. I hope you guys have an incredible Continued Christmas day. Mm. <laughs> he loves kisses. Um, this week's video is going to be up before New Year's, I think, because Sunday is New Year's and everybody's busy then. We won't be. We're staying at home. We're going to be chilling here. So I think this week's video is going to be up maybe on Thursday or on Wednesday, and it's gonna be a cozy widow. Do you have a little tail? Why are you shaking? The kitchen isn't scary. Thank you, John. Merry Christmas to everybody. We want to say Merry Merry Christmas. It has to be a long outro so we so we can all look at Grim together. Happy Christmas to you. Oh, he drooled. Okay, wait. We're gonna do the kebab again because we need to look at the back of the sweater. Holiday. Hold on, honey. Kebab, look at that. Like a little skewer on the skewer on the fire. Oh. I don't know that. Do you know how many people bought you dentist sticks? <laughs> so many people were gonna be able to give you so many dentist sticks. Merry Christmas. I love that I'm not turning it off. I'm just <laughs> we need to show off Grim, you know? In his sweater. sweater. We'll, we'll do, do another, another one of these. these. Okay. You have, you have a display. display. It's, it's just, just a Christmas, Christmas display of Grim. Okay. okay. We, we love you guys. guys. Thank, Thank you so much for being here. here. I hope. You had, had a pajama, pajama party, party with us. We, we drank mulled wine, wine and made, made the ugliest gingerbread house. house. I don't want to talk about it. it. <laughs> I'll, I'll make, make something better next year. year. Uh, <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> look pretty, Grim. Look pretty, Christopher. Yeah. We, we love, love you. <laughs>